Good afternoon, everyone. Um, big weekend for us, uh, heading down to Lubbock against really good Texas Tech team. Uh, they're playing well. Uh, happy for, for Coach Wells. He's one of my close friends in the profession and, and happy to see him having success, um, doing it in a variety of ways, but uh, an explosive offense, a veteran quarterback, uh, a lot of good skill players playing really well up front offensively, um, defensively. Uh, people have gotten after them a little bit. They have, uh, I think, some really good talent, some good athletes, and, and they run run to the football and they smack you. But uh, uh, they've run into a couple of teams that have been able to rush the football, and then uh, they got to play catch up. And, and that's kind of where we're at right now, um, as far as uh, we need to play from from ahead more so than from behind. And that's uh, what we've done the last few weeks is play from behind, and that's probably not. Uh, uh, suited best for us. Um, you see, when we play ahead against Stanford or against Nevada, um, our, our ability to dictate uh, some of the tempo and pace and calls we make both offensively and defensively, when we're playing from behind. We had to probably be more aggressive uh, on defense, uh, which causes some bigger plays. And then uh, offensively, we, we'd like to be able, I like our balance. Uh, we're, we're better balanced right now, but uh, uh, it's a big week for us, important week for us. Guys had good spirit, good energy yesterday and, and are excited for another opportunity. Chris, you kind of mentioned it there, but given that Texas Tech has been um, giving up some yards on the ground, how important is it for you guys to run the ball this week? Well, it's really important for us to be able to sustain run and then have balance and, and continue to be able to, to throw the ball because I think Skyler's playing at a really high level, and so I don't want to take the ball out of his hands. And um, we also believe there's going to be some wind out there uh, on Saturday. So, you know, based on that, you, you may have to be able to run the ball a little bit more into a breeze. Um, and then uh, the kicking game becomes a big factor, too. That's a little bit last week, but I was wondering if you could elaborate with uh, when, when you said that you really designed the three down formation around what Khalid Duke could do with his unique talents. Why is that spot a defensive end, hybrid linebacker, whatever you call it? Why is that so important in this formation? Well, I'll look at Iowa State, that number twenty-three, the Rose kid that's been an All-Conference player for a number of years. You can be you can be an in-the-box player. You can be uh, an edge, take the field away guy. You can rush. Uh, you can cover uh, all those things, and so that's where the hybrid mix becomes such a huge factor of, of a guy that can be a linebacker, be a defensive end, and be a safety. Any new update on Bronson? Could he play this week? Uh, it, it's either going to be this week or next week. Um, we're still hoping for this week. You know, it's just we're just getting into practice today. He's going to do a few things today, and we'll see how he responds. But uh, um, we feel confident whether it's not it's this Saturday, and it's a good chance it still could be. If not, it should be the next Saturday. With the long touchdown pass that Thompson got in his fourth down conversion, those two touchdown passes, how do you continue to build off that with Skyler getting – to put Scott in their situations, but also to keep Deuce Vaughn involved in the offense going forward. Well, I think that's why he's able to make those plays is because Deuce is a, you know, an active contributor and, and people are always knowing where, where Deuce is at, which opens up uh, a lot of guys in the, in the past game. And I think it's opened up Joe Urban. Joe Urban's playing really well and, and uh, excited for Joe because he's getting stronger uh, and, uh, and we got to find ways to get Joe Irvin the football because Joe Irvin's doing some really good things. And I, I like the fact that we have a couple of backs that uh, are explosive guys, as well as, um, you know, a, a really good passing game that uh, you have to account for. And now sitting at 0-3 and in conference play to begin, is there a certain message that you say to your team going forward? Yeah, 1-0 today, 1-0 for the week. Chris Weed is getting a small glimpse at the wide receiver potential that you've been talking about for several weeks. Pardon me, I, I missed your question. I'm sorry. The sorry, I kind of rest it. Are we getting just a small glimpse oh, of the wide receiver potential that exists? I, I don't know if we're getting. I I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, we've got good wide receivers. I mean, Philip Malik, um, Landry's good player. Uh, I think we saw Tyrone Howell can do some things. We've 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 got good players at wide receiver. How do you get the ball to tight ends, um, If they're open, we're going to throw it to them. I mean, how many balls do you want to get spin, spun around? You know, we've got running backs that can catch it, wide receivers that can catch it. It's the design of the play and what the defense does. You can't just say, I'm only going to target Malik. I'm only going to target Daniel. I'm only going to target Deuce. Those guys are taken away. That's why you have a six-year quarterback that can 
get the ball to the people that are open. And so it's not necessarily by position. It's just uh, for that scheme and for that play call, who's the body there that, uh, that they're either not defending or that uh, we see where the coverage is rotated and we've got to go away and, and wherever that body is, that's where we're going to throw it. And defensively, how do you get more quarter, get more pressure on the quarterback? Uh, you know, we, we rushed a decent amount last week and uh, they picked, they picked guys up and, and Kohler was a Kohler was a handful for us. Um, but uh, uh, it's a combination of rushing three, rushing four and rushing five. And kind of playing off that, I was going to ask just without Bronson, how you felt like the defensive ends played without him? Uh, they played all right. I mean, I think that's kind of where we're at with a lot of positions. We, we can play better. We've got to get them in positions to play better um, collectively on defense. Um, there's not one position that right now that you'd say, man, we're just not getting any production out of that spot. But there's not one position that I would say, um, boy, they're maxed out. We we we've, we got to count on somebody else. We we've got to get better play uh, from every position, and we've got to get put them in better position as coaches. We as coaches have to do a better job of putting in putting them in position to be successful. A common thread with some of the third down struggles, or is it basically what you're just alluding to? I think right it's there? it's a little bit of both. I mean, when we when we want to pressure, um, you know, we're bringing people and and. Uh, uh, People are beating us in man coverage, and then on the on the zone side of it, um, we aren't getting home with uh, a three man or sometimes a four man rush, which gives a kid more time to throw or scramble out of the pocket, and guys are are sliding open. I mean, you know, there's some plays where boy, we're 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 close, and all of a sudden we have to bring somebody out of coverage because Purdy scrambles out, or some or Sanders scrambles out, or uh, Rattler scrambles out, and then there's the opening. So it's it's just a a combination of things that there's there's not bust as much as um, people are making plays against it. Building off that, how, how challenging is it right now to find that balance between using your defense to attack and make plays and trying not to give up the big plays? Yeah, uh, we can't have that second mindset at all uh, as far as we can't give up the big plays because then you start playing on your heels and then you're tentative on things. Um, so we've got to get back to some of our basics. We've probably tried to do too much. Uh, we've talked about that on defense of trying to do too much. Uh, and it's easy to say that against Iowa State. You guys watched Iowa State. They're in every formation known to mankind and really talented at doing that shift trade motion uh, to get their playmakers the ball. Uh, and we need to continue to simplify so that we're our, we are playing faster, uh, more attacking, whether that is bringing more pressure, at least our guys maybe, um, you know, can if we simplify the plan, simplify the, simplify the calls, uh, maybe our kids will play it a little bit faster. So we got to take ownership in that as a coaching staff. And on the offensive side, um, Mike asked about it a little bit, but <clears throat> You've got a great player in Deuce Vaughn who can do so much for you, but do you find yourself got to make sure we get Tyrone Howell involved? We got to we we got to spread the ball around a little yeah. bit better. Yeah, uh, and and we still have to give what the defense take what the defense gives us. Uh, we, you know, the most talented guy we have is the six year senior quarterback that has to make the decisions of where the ball should go based on the coverage based on the pressure, uh, based on the look that he sees. And we're confident that he can do that. Um, if that means that deuce is taken out of something for a series or for a quarter and somebody else is making a play, I'm shoot, deuce will be happy about it. We just want to find a way to win. Um, but it's been fun to see uh, guys like Landry step up. It's been fun to see guys like Tyrone step up. Uh, I was happy with with Philip Brooks. I mean, that was a big time route and a great play. And Iowa State doesn't give up those 50 yard passes or whatever the heck it was very often. And we were able to hit a home run. And so uh, I think it makes us more difficult as we continue on to defend when we have so many guys that can beat you. When you went back and watched the film of that game Saturday, how far off were you guys from being successful? Um, you know, there's 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 a play here and there, and I think that's you can say that about every game, even the games we won. We made a few plays that if we don't make those plays, we maybe are in a one score game um, in the games we won. But, uh, you know, the big series for us uh, was essentially to tie it up at 10 10 or go up 14 to 10. 
Uh, and, and that's close, but we're not there. I'm tired of being close. The guys are tired of being close. Just like when we were down 20 to seven, we needed to put, to put a drive together to go make it 20 to 14. And we started the semblance of a drive and we didn't execute. It wasn't play calls and we just didn't execute. And then we ended up going down uh, by multiple scores. And so uh, we're, we're close, but nobody wants to hear close. We need to, we need to get it done. Chris, you guys have stuck pretty much with the huddle offense, even while you've been playing from behind the last couple of games. Is there a point um, or a certain score you have in mind where you tell Messingham we should go no huddle or hurry up a little bit more? Yeah, we we absolutely we have our turbo in. We were in turbo a decent amount. Um, some of it was personnel driven and hoping we'd get the first down in this play where we keep the chain set and then roll. Uh, but uh, something we're talking about as a staff. Is there a certain point number? Not, not necessarily. There's okay. a certain time or score. Gotcha. And, and when you look at Texas Tech, do they play any differently now than they did previously when they had a different quarterback this season? Not really. Um, you know, it's they have a different offensive coordinator, but I know that Coach Wells still has a pretty good hand in it. Um, so there's some things that are, you know, last year's Texas Tech. There's some things that are last year's TCU. There's a combination of some things that have got – both the kids that they've played at quarterback, one played a ton for them last year. The other one transferred in that played a lot of football at Oregon. So I think they're confident in whoever's playing quarterback to be able to get it done. And, and uh, they have really good wide receivers and good running backs uh, and an experienced offensive line. So I think they're probably pretty similar to us in the fact of they probably have, there are certain playmakers they want to get the ball to, but they have a number of guys that can beat you. Game, Skyler um, mentioned that he thought that everyone had to take a look in the mirror. And what I'm curious about is, have you already seen positive dividends from from that? Yeah, I think everybody does, and, and coaches included. And, and we took ownership on Sunday for some things that we had some mental errors uh, on either side of the ball or on special teams. And you know, you can't put that on the kids. You got to look at yourself and put it on yourself as a coach first and say, are we putting these guys in the best position to be successful? And are they, are we simplifying enough so the kids can understand it and play fast? And that's the first thing is as coaches, we need to be better. Uh, and, and we spent all day Sunday and half of Monday talking about that. Then we met with uh, some guys on the leadership council on Monday afternoon and met with the team Monday uh, late afternoon to try to, explain to those guys, Hey, we've got to take some ownership in this too, as coaches. And, uh, everybody needs to give a little bit more. Everybody can step up a little bit, uh, and everybody can, you know, probably own their role a little bit more, but that's coaches as well. I mean, this isn't, uh, just the offense, just the defense, just one part of the offense, one part of the defense. This is a collective group and it starts with us. The collective group at the start of the year, this is the closest team that anyone's been a yeah. part of. And I'm curious about the collective mentality, the coming together of this team during adversity and yep. being able to come out with positive results. Yeah. Uh, thank heavens we are a close team because this is, you know, you can be divided when you have uh, uh, adversity strike. And I've been pleased uh, with our leadership, our older guys, the, the council to be able to bring guys together. Um, guys know it. Guys know that uh, we need to take ownership and, and um, get this thing righted in the right direction. Um, played pretty good schedule now too. You know, we got to take into the consideration of that, that uh, uh, we had an opportunity to win all three games. We didn't. Um, and, and now we have a chance to, to move forward in the next one. And you cannot trip on what's behind you. We, we, we didn't play well enough and, and we got beat. And if you keep thinking about the negative, you're going to lose sight of what's coming in front of you. And I know that we have to challenge each other as coaches and challenge each other as, as players to be better, but you need to do that with a positive mindset. And sometimes we all have a tendency to take it from the negative standpoint. I'm telling you guys, 18 to 22 year olds can't handle the negative side of things. And we have to, and I'm asking you guys, I'm asking for your help. We need to be more positive. I know we can play better. You know, we can play better, but we've got to give, these kids more positive things because we got a great locker room in there kids that do care about each other kids that love each other coaches that believe in these kids and we can't give up on them didn't mean that to be like the ending did you? <laughs>
I should have dropped the mic and go. So going back a couple couple minutes ago, you're talking about the defense. Does playing the three three five give you the advantage of not straying too far from your base, no matter what you're trying to play? Yeah, and you got to also realize we're decimated at the DN position. So how many more things can we go to and what can we do for the rest of the season to try to be successful? We don't have Khalid Duke and we don't have Bronson Massey right now at that spot. So that is where we're down some numbers. And so what our kids play fastest is what we're going to go with right now. Chris, the goal is always to make a team one dimensional, but for Texas tech, I guess what's the beast when Sir Roger Boy, Thompson is yeah. playing well, as opposed to if you can kind of eliminate him from the equation. You know, that's an interesting question you have and, and how you put it. They're a big RPO team. This is the first true RPO team that we've played this year. You know, Oklahoma does some of it. I would say everybody does a little bit of version of it, but this is the first true RPO team that there is a pass option off of almost every run, not everyone, but a decent amount of them. And so it's hard to make that one dimensional because if you bring everybody to the run, it is run, but the ball's still being thrown. Um, and if you play them back, they're just reading it saying, you're not going to come. We'll just keep giving it, keep giving it because you don't have enough players to play the run. So our job as coaches is to figure out the best combination of coverages, combination of blitzes to make it as confusing as we can for the quarterback. And this kid's a, a, a special kid because he's a, an experienced guy. And I think that's what makes their offense so tough to defend. They've put up a lot of points and a lot of yards against everybody because of their RPO scheme. And the ball is coming out and you're going, that was a run. I know it was a run and the ball's still coming out. Staying with that, I was going to ask a little bit about that too. What are the challenges of that RPO with the size of their receivers? And it just isn't one or two guys. It's several, as you know. Yeah, and they've got a big tight end too that's about 6'7 or 6'9 or something. So it, it's a real challenge you know, because you can't sit in soft zone and you better be able to win some one-on-one -on -one matches and matchups. And that's, that's the, the thing and the key for us is to be able to win some one-on-one -on -one matchups and to be able to get our hands on some balls. I mean, we may not get home, whether we're rushing three, four or five, but we can get, can we get our hands up and deflect a few of those balls? Because that's the thing that sometimes affects an RPO team is the ball's got to come out and they've got small windows to throw, throw it through. Can we get our hands up and then knock some balls down? Following up on what you said earlier, the three teams you've lost are 17 and two overall. And how do you communicate to your players that, that's behind us. Those teams are, those are three of the best teams in the conference without saying we're into a more manageable yep. part of our schedule, but you are. Yeah. Uh, it, it is difficult because, you know, our, our kids believe, and we believe we're one of the better teams in the conference, but we've not proved that every Saturday. And that's why I keep talking about the guys of you cannot worry about what's behind you. That's over with. It's just like, you know, we want to go back to our win against Stanford and, and kind of replicate what our preparation was, replicate, you know, the film we watched, the walkthroughs, all those things that made that group successful. Okay, the great coach, but now that's over with. We got to get to the next one. And so we're, it's a delicate balance to say we're good enough uh, when we prepare like we did against Nevada, like we did against Stanford, um, but against teams that are really talented, you'll prepare or not, or, or be locked in. You know, there's some teams with some really special players out there that um, are going to make some plays and are, are the reason why they're first team All-American or, or up for a Heisman or whatever it may be. So uh, continuing to get the guys to focus on on the task at hand, and that's today. And, and I loved our leadership council because on Monday they just kept saying, Coach, we just need to go 1-0 and today and meaning Monday. And that's what we need to do today is we need to go 1-0 and on Tuesday and continue that preparation Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and not cram for the final on Friday. Did you anticipate probably rotating the offensive line a little bit more by this point, or, or how close are you to that? Yeah, we've had some guys probably behind the scenes nicked up that you guys don't know about even that probably are practicing but not quite healthy enough um, for Coach Riley to say, no, I've got to go with this guy for – another 15, 20 snaps. Uh, I, I know the guy that, that has played the most the last three games. That's an extra guy is Hadley Panzer. Um, and, and Hadley's earned those. 
uh, and we're continuing to to look at Carver and and we lost KT for a week. We get KT back this week, you know, whether it's Logan or Carver or um, KT, we've got to try to continue to push those guys along. I know he's playing a lot of guard when he goes in. Is he kind of groomed to be a center down the line? Hopefully, you know, Hayden Gillum's, uh, we think, a, a good player too, but that, that'll be something that, knock on wood, we keep Noah healthy all season that we'll figure out in the spring. Chris is a defensive guy and specifically a defensive back. How much has it irked you when you've looked at the last two weeks and each of those opposing quarterbacks completed 88%? Of yeah. Um, it's for stars to give those guys credit. We went against some good quarterbacks, good receivers, good tight ends, but we're, we're not maybe connecting in man coverage as well. If it's against zone, good players are going to pick you apart. I mean, Skyler's done that uh, to a lot of teams. Oklahoma's pretty good and Skyler picked those guys apart. It's the man coverage stuff where we're, you know, Rush East made a really good play on a 50-50 ball. That was a vertical play. And we need to have more of those plays being made where, you know what, Kohler's a good player. We had J-Mac a couple times in a good spot. J-Mac would say, I got to knock that away. Same with TJ. I know that, that there's a size matchup and stuff, but if you're a competitor, you, you want those competitive 50-50 situations. And, and I think Julius is another example. Julius needs to make the make that play, and Julius knows it. You know, that's the thing that I know those kids are frustrated but there's no reason to beat a kid down when you know they're doing all they can. We just got to continue to work the techniques. I mean, going back and when I watched the game from, from Saturday, I, I was just incredibly impressed with how well Felix keeps playing. I, mean, I know you guys had hyped him a lot coming yeah. into this year, but has he been even better than what you guys thought? Yeah, I think he can still limit some of his um, some of his maybe technique or or alignment or assignment errors. But I love the way the kid plays. I mean, he plays a million miles an hour and makes plays and, and does some things that uh, um, we need a special player like that to do. When you lose a couple special players that, quote, were in front of him or older than him, he, he's had to grow up, grow up quickly to, to be the guy there. But, um, you know, he's a young player, so his future is really bright, and he continues to improve and continue, and, and he knows he's got to continue to get better. Okay, we'll see everybody down in Lubbock.